sweet. Hello. Can anyone around here speak basketball? Yeah, you feel like myself. Yeah, I'm fine, yeah. There it is. It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. We're going, going back, back to back. back. Welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball, Basketball Podcast. Podcast. I'm your host, Freddie Rivas, and uh, sir, who's trying to harmonize with me? Who are you? <laughs> I'm your producer, Matt Duncan. How's it going, Freddie? I'm doing pretty good, um, enjoying the winter, but uh, if my head was cold, like, you know, if, if a listener's head is cold, where, how might they warm that up? Well, you know what? The best way to do it is to get yourself a toque, and I'm not saying to go to that winner's and try to get one on the cheap. You want a Confederacy of Dunks toque, you know, 20 bucks a pop, and uh, not itchy. I think both of our guests have one, and uh, huh. I'm sure they can tell you that they're they're quite comfortable. I always love that you advertise that it's not itchy. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's a major selling point for any hat, I think. Uh, but you know, if people want to help us out or kind of support us, um, you know, how might they do that? Where might they go? You know what? You can subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash dunks podcast. And we've got some, uh, you know, special things there. Uh, you know, Freddie's hot sauce that I think it hasn't expired yet. Uh, hey. you could possibly I, own for yourself. It never expires. Okay? Some special content by us. And uh, just help us support the the pod and uh, get us to that next level, right? Yeah, a rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff that uh, podcasters love to say. Yeah, on iTunes um, and Stitcher and listen on Spotify or Player FM, whatever makes you happy. Or even on YouTube, even though no one really listens to it there. I really appreciate you saying Player FM for people like me. Yeah, yeah, you are our Player FM hit. Okay, Matt. Let's uh, let's bring on our guest. I was at the game last night, so I'm just like itching to talk Raptors yeah. ball here because it's just it's the best time ever. Um, I, I recently did his uh, his show with uh, NBA TV XL, the lineup. Um, he's awesome. He's like Mr. Basketball. Uh, you know, he he's worked for so many different basketball organizations. He's with uh, NBA TV Canada. He's been uh, with NBA TV, um, and he's a writer. Raptors unpublished. Uh, people call him Sweets. Give it up for Dwayne Watson. That's funky. That's for you. That's your funky beat, man. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Happy to be back. And just so you know, like when I wear my Confederacy of Dunks toque, I get infinitely smarter. Oh, my I <laughs> oh, I like that. That's, that's like a new, new kind of like feature for like, first of all, you don't get itchy. Second of all, you get way smarter. So <laughs> that's what I like um, to hear. How you doing, man? Thanks for doing the pod. Come on, man. I'm, I'm happy to be back. It took a while, but we made it happen again. It took too long. I mean, I'm going to say what I've, I've said to some of our other guests. I'm just, I'm just straight up too disorganized. So, so blame me. <laughs> all right. It's not, it's not Matt. <laughs> It's never Matt. It's never Matt. It's never, yeah. Matt's always innocent somehow. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's bring on guest number two uh, yeah. and, and get talking Raptors ball. Um, he's done the uh, done the pot a bunch of times. Um, he's uh, he's a cool dude. He's super hilarious. He's actually uh, like Dwayne. He's a pretty good. He plays pretty good big man basketball. I actually love to see them go toe to toe. Give it up at home for the hilarious man himself, Ian Gordon. Oh man, yeah, that's that a bagpipe song. Never gets old, man. It is that it's it really is quite something. It's hard <laughs> for me to even stomach it for that. It really would drive me crazy. That song that you put on if you want somebody to break. Yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure some CIA torture music. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are gonna break in like thirty seconds to that. Can you imagine if you play that in the Scotiabank Arena during a timeout? Oh, yeah, yeah. People would be like fights in the stands, like. <laughs> and oh, <man. laughs> the arena is emptying. We don't know why. <laughs> but uh, Ian, thanks, thanks for thanks for joining the pod again. Um, oh yeah, always, always. It's my pleasure. I love, I love doing it. I hope the Tuke's making you smarter as well, uh, and also your head not itchy. No, my head's really actually, it almost, it's like I don't even need to wash my hair anymore. It's like the, the toque takes care of that. It's really an <laughs> <Yeah>. astoundingly <laughs> good toque. I recommend it. To You're everybody. making us blush. Yeah, oh, we're yeah, really. Testimonials here. 
And I'm you know, bald, so the toque is actually, I've noticed the toque has actually been helping me grow some hair back. So oh, wow. People listening, you may want to get this toque. It might be the cure for baldness. It, I don't have enough good things to say about it. It is actually a nice gray, too. I like a gray toque. Okay, this is a true toque testimonial, okay? Thank you. You can, you can grow hair from nothing. It makes you smarter. You're not itchy. <laughs> like, lots of good stuff going on. Um, speaking of lots of good stuff going on, uh, the Raptors are 15 yes. wins in a row. They just passed the uh, Calgary Stampeders for the longest Canadian win streak ever. Um, are you guys ready to talk some Raptors ball or what? Absolutely. Well, definitely. All right, Maddie, give me that Raptors sting. <laughs> Dr. Grant, my dear Dr. Sattler, welcome to Jurassic Park. Wow, shout out to the Bobby Webster love uh, at the end of that <laughs> yeah. audio clip, Matt. Little start with a little Jurassic Park and with a little Bobby Webster page. That's how I like By to the do way, it. By the way, yeah, I, said, I was at the game last night and they, they, they honored Nurse and uh, Siakam and Lowry and everyone went nuts and poor Bobby Webster was last. <laughs> and they're like, and give it up for Bobby Webster. And everyone just like was like sitting down and they're like, oh yeah, that guy looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> And you could see Bobby say, yeah, yeah, I guess they don't love me as much. But, but, you know, if Bobby would ever meet you, Matt, he'd understand. Like, he's got a, he's got a true OG fan yeah. out there. It's yeah. hard to follow Masai. Like, they really shouldn't have had Bobby last. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, Masai, Masai wasn't even there. And we're, and we're going to get to Masai. But let's, let's, let's yeah. start with the streak here. Because... Oh, okay. Before you guys finish with Bobby, um, sure. little known fact, he's really good at basketball. I would venture to probably say he's the best GM Hooper. For real, I yeah, did not know that. Yeah, really? He, yeah, he's really good. He wow. gets get to the cup like he's good. Shit. Wait, what's his like? What's his basketball background? Um, I don't know. I think he played. I think he played at college. I'm not sure, but dude, I played against him. He's. I played with him. He's really good. <laughs> Is okay. Have you ever played Nurse? Is Nurse good? I've never. I've never played with Nurse. I haven't played with any of the head coaches. I played with some of the analytics guys, uh, and Bobby, but. I don't know if Nurse is good, but like Bobby is just like a skilled player. Like I'm not saying that Nurse doesn't look like he's that good, but <laughs> like he's good. <laughs> well, I mean, Bobby's got ice in his veins. We know that. Yeah. Um, yeah, he looks like he could be crafty. Okay, yeah. let's uh, let's let's talk this uh, this wonderful streak. Um, I was at the game last night. It was competitive for portions. I think I think you know the weird part about a streak is you kind of feel like mathematically every game your team's supposed to lose but at the same time it feels like they just can't lose like there's you know like guys like McCaw are hitting like clutch threes in the fourth quarter and and everyone's just kind of confident and taking turns with the spotlight um Dwayne I'll start I'll start with you do, do you have like a favorite moment of this streak well I, I kind of don't it's kind of really just cause what you touched on the fact that there's so many different types of wins. It's never the same thing each time. You have different players stepping up at different moments. So I think the totality of it where it's like, you know, you hear all the time, next man up, next man up. Mm-hmm. But it's like these guys keep finding ways to win in different ways, and that's what I think makes it unique. But, I mean, if i got to pick something, I'm going to use a recency bias and look at last night's game with OG with 25 and 12, I mean. That was big for him. He's a guy who I've really expected him to step up in various moments when other guys are down. Mm-hmm. And I kind of wonder, like, you know, are we really going to see him take another step? And, you know, a game like last night is, is super positive because I don't expect him to do that every night, but you definitely want to see him give you more when other guys are out of the lineup. No, that's a that's a great point. And, and I think the streak's been so long that, uh, you know, with, with all the wins, it's kind of – it, it's kind of coincided with OG offensively slumping a little bit, which is weird when you're, when your team's winning, it's kind of like, okay, he's doing his job. He's obviously amazing on defense, but he had a career high in rebounds and points yesterday. So um, yeah, I think he really thrived with that, that small ball look we had with Rondé. Like he just seemed to uh, kind of impose his will yesterday against the, uh, against the T-Wolves. Um, yeah. Ian, do you have a, do you, do you have a favorite moment from the streak? Um, I mean, I, I agree with Dwayne. The whole streak has been impressive. Um, one, I guess if I was going to say, I really loved it when Ibaka hit that go-ahead um, go ahead three against Indiana. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the fact that it was Ibaka was awesome. 
the fact that we were down big in that game kind of sort of speaks to our our will to to really kind of get get the job done. Um, the streak itself has been amazing. The other the, we've played some pretty good teams, but it hasn't really what we've been doing this streak during the streak is taking care of business. Yeah. Teams that we should beat, we beat them. We don't let them beat us, and that's speaks to team chemistry it speaks to a winning culture it's it's awesome it's really great to watch <laughs> yeah and we're, oh sorry good sorry no i just think I, I feel like we're probably the envy the envy of a lot of other teams out there whether they are, want to admit it or not i think so i feel like this team has like effortless chemistry and mm-hmm. and poor charlotte tried to you know like just just kind of jumping on your uh jumping on your your indiana moment if i'm not mistaken basically you know, Ibaka hit that game-winning three game ends. He walks right in, right into the uh, I do art uh, <laughs> ESPN interview. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like this, like this team's just on such a high. Like the whole, uh, what about scarves? I put you on scarves. I just saw Blake Murphy tweeted out a picture. Um, Ibaka got the whole team scarves. That's amazing. And they're full on like <clears throat> scarf modeling. Like, like this team is genuinely probably Hermes scarves. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I don't even know what Herme is. That's why I know it's probably really good. <laughs> probably they're probably not from Eddie Bauer. Put it that way. <laughs> not from yeah, no Eddie Bauer scarves. Not to, please. Slag, not to slag Eddie Bauer, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but uh, the scarves make them smarter. No, yes. but, but but really I think you know, Serge <laughs> put right. a really a really bright point. Um <laughs> I mean like last year this time, Serge wasn't the guy. I mean, he wasn't a guy you could really count on. And I think like He's been so good, obviously, with the playoff run, even now with Mark out, um, mm. you know, making good decisions, uh, contesting shots, rebounding, doing the pick and pop with Kyle. He's, he's been passing, really big. too. Yeah, like, he's been really big. Yeah. There's I something, think, yeah, it's great. Sorry. Uh, no, I, I was just going to say, like, my, my, my favorite moments was also from that Indiana game. I just think it was so incredible the way we came back. And, and, and it was like the sign of, uh, you know, nurse isn't done busting out these presses and I, I think for me that makes me really excited for the playoffs because it's like what else does this guy have and like it, j- just the way that Siakam kind of stole that pass from Sabonis like a like a free mm-hmm. safety and and he he drove to the rim and like bro it's like Brogdon wasn't even really there like I, I, I know Brog I think Brogdon was like in foul trouble or whatever and you know didn't want to make it a like a three-point play but it's just kind of it seems like the Raptors have fun when the game gets really, really competitive. And I know, you know, we've been injured and our, our record against plus 500 teams is still, you know, is still a blight for some people. But I, I just think this team loves to compete. And, and yeah, like, like you said, Ian, we've been beating lesser teams. But mm-hmm. I think for the, yeah. yeah, for the most part, it hasn't been in question. I know Atlanta is kind of a scary team to play and, that that Brooklyn game was close, and we've had some close games, but I just think the the Raptors are having fun when the game is on the line, you know. So, so it speaks to confidence as well. Like they're very, they're this team's very confident. They know they can win, but they're if you're playing basketball with confidence and a carefree attitude somehow mixed together, you you you're really doing something well. You're hard to beat, especially if you're committed on defense. Like that's why this team I I really do like for a lot of reasons, but the, the, the confidence, the cockiness, but also the fact that they can pull up, pull up, uh, you know, their, their straps and actually play D like the team wants to win. They want to prove everybody wrong. Can I, can I pose a question here? I know already it's your show, but (laughs) please, please. Um, you know, it's funny because for me, I've always felt that like this Raptors team is going to be devil in the playoffs because you know, Ian, as you touched, like they know how to win. Mm -hmm. They've won the championship and they've got the veteran savvy. They got the poise. I almost feel like, do you think that this winning streak is like, because we've constantly been overlooked, and I think we were this season as well. But do you think that this winning streak is now going to kind of like put more eyes on us, give it more attention? And I guess the NBA knows who we are, but like, I guess definitely from a media standpoint, are we kind of like losing the flying under the radar moment with that, with this run? Yeah, I think like, I, th- I think there's a good chance that, that that's partially fueling this run. Like, I feel like this whole team collectively feels. Like they've been, I don't want to say like othered, but just kind of like they, they've achieved things and they should have more respect. Like to a man, everyone on this squad is just like bursting with confidence. So I think that this run, like, yeah, I, I don't know if the national attention will stick. I think people are still going to wonder, you know, who's our crunch scorer 
um, you know, when the game's on the line with like two minutes to go. And I think we just won't have clear answers to that until the playoffs. Um, you know, whether it's like Norm or Fred or Kyle or, or Pascal taking the last shots or just kind of how that works. I think there, there's always going to be that doubt. But, man, this team is, you know, we're, we're on pace for, well, well, what is it, 58, 59 wins or whatever. So I think I think people are going to start to give this team the, like, actually res- actual respect. Yeah. I think there's two, two things. I think the win- winning is undeniable. So as the streak increases, if it does, when you creep up into 18s and 19s and 20s, then you're flirting with big streaks, all-time NBA streaks, like what the Heat – or what I think it was the Cavs had with LeBron, or was it the Heat? I can't remember. Um, it was one of those LeBron teams. There's been a few other teams that did it. I think Houston. When you get into those kind of streaks, you can't deny the historic winning. Um, the other thing, in terms of like playoffs and stuff, there is that worry who's going to take the shot. But I feel like this team is so pragmatic and so confident in each other's abilities that it, I think it will come down to situational. It'll come down to team getting in the huddle, nurse drawing up a play and saying, this is the right play we think for this moment. Whoever is going to shoot it is who's going to shoot it. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think, you know, the one constant throughout this this run and streak is that is Nick Nurse. And I think, yeah. you know, without blowing smoke, I think he's yeah, like, good point. definitely a coach of the year candidate. And I think he's always made the right decisions, mm-hmm. um, whether it's defensively or in clutch moments and in, in plays. And I think this team, I was a little – I wasn't 100% sold on Nurse last year. I thought, you know, he's a new coach. I thought he had some ballsy things he did at the beginning of the season. But he's earned his team's respect. And I think he's earned the league's respect. Oh, Dwayne, I'm, I'm 100% with you. I was actually, you know, I was one of the rare people who was kind of upset when, when Casey was fired. And, uh, like, I wasn't on the, like, fire Casey train. And actually, it took me a little while to, to respect Nurse. And I thought that he had a really, really good squad. So, I, you know, I thought he did some good stuff, but I thought we were just stacked last year. And and this year he's just blown me over, like, you know, from the Dallas comeback to, you know, the, the Embiid zero-point game to, to, to the press, like, you know, kind of stuff he started with all the different zones. And I just think Nurse is a super, super impressive coach. Uh, yeah. let's, uh, let's go to, a, you know, a less fun subject. I don't even really know how to broach it because there's just been so, so many – there's been so much ink spilled in such a little time. Uh, Dwayne, I'm going to start with you again. But, yeah, just like – I'm just going to list off a couple things here with, with Masai Ujiri in the past week, right? right. So, so the deadline comes, you know. Um, it's Mills is fired by the Knicks, and, you know, the Masai thing starts again. Yeah, And most Raptors fans – are somewhat used to it. It's kind of obnoxious. It's the same old thing. Like you got to go to who wouldn't want to go to the Knicks, who wouldn't want to win in New York, all that kind of stuff. But then, you know, hardcore basketball fans are like, yeah, but they got Dolan and Dolan is always the end of the conversation. Cause he's a, you know, a bozo. He, he's bad at running a franchise and whatever, whatever, you know? And then, then this stuff comes out where it's like, you know, Mark Stein is saying that, uh, Silver is trying. Adam Silver is is perhaps trying to get Masai into New York, and then you know, then m- more stuff starts to leak out where you know the the guy. I, I guess the guy that replaced Tim Laiweki. Uh, forgive me if I don't pronounce his name. He says uh, uh, the head of, of MLSE, but Michael Frisdahl um, was like a. There's rumors that he was like a, a apartheid profiteer, which you know I can't imagine anything that's more directly opposite of what. Masai cares about in his life like and then uh then 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 the Knicks hire Leon Rose uh and, and you know Grange is still putting out more stuff and it, I, it's it's just kind of hard to make sense of what's going on and then you know just what two days ago Masai is is uh in Africa with Justin Trudeau so like it, it's really hard to get a handle like is this leveraging is this New York is, is this a Knicks kind of franchise digging up stuff and trying to make you know, uh, our situation muddy. Like, well, what's your take on all of this? Like, well, um, first and foremost, Dylan is a bozo. So I think you're right. To me, it kind of, even if Adam Silver is puppet, puppet mastering it, I feel like you can never trust Dylan because we, he's always, even though when he says he's going to be hands off, his ego won't allow him to be hands off. Uh, yeah, totally. Which is why I can never see, like, there's nothing he can really promise you because you can't really trust him. Um, so, I would hope, but the funny thing is that was my thought, and you're right, I saw Grange make some reports, and I thought it was funny that 
uh, Michael Granger's sports that was making reports because I've seen him with Messiah, and I think that like Granger is yeah. one of those guys who has a close relationship with him. And if he felt that Messiah was going to make a move, like why would he expose his you know his his source, right? And the fact that he reported on it kind of gave credence to it. So it, it was a little weird, but ultimately I feel like the Knicks really didn't don't have time to wait for Messiah to like if it can happen in the off season um, to wait for him. Right. Um, I don't know if he's, I can't see him leaving. I know I heard the stuff about Freesdale as well. Um, one thing I can tell you by being close to like this team and this franchise is that there's a, there's an overwhelming support for Masai and his giants of Africa initiative from this company. They put a lot of support and a lot of funds and a lot of manpower into it. So I'm not saying he couldn't get that somewhere else, but I know that's another reason for for him to stay in that regard. Right, and and I think you know, like m- most Raptors fans who've been paying close attention, like it seems like that, like like everything you just said about all the support. That's why this, uh, you know, the the Frisdale thing was like was pretty was pretty shocking because I I I didn't read the original Toronto Star article when it came out, like in like 2017 or whatever, and and you, yeah, you you know, you'd have to imagine that Messiah and him work so closely that. You know, like maybe stuff had been handled behind closed doors a very long time ago. That that's why I kind of posed the question: like, are the Knicks just trying to dig stuff up and kind of like make things confusing for for the for the Raptors franchise? And like, you know, you know, I, I think also um, jumping on, uh, I think it was Skeets from the Starters. Uh, like it, it might have been Taz, but it, 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 someone on the pod was just saying was just kind of wondering why. You know, this hasn't been nipped in the butt. Like, well, like, why doesn't Masai or Tenenbaum or somebody come out and say, like, hey, we love Masai. This is all good. We're going to make sure we take care of him. He's like a gem of a city. Or, you know, maybe that's just not how they do business. Like, I think. Well, it's, yeah. well I, think, I think Tenenbaum, even the first time he came out and said, like, we love Masai, yada, yada, yada. I don't think there's a question of Masai not loving this organization. But I think from a negotiation standpoint, he's not going to say, I love it. I'm never gonna leave because right, yeah. <laughs> well, it comes summertime. He wants to have that 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 chip, but yeah, that's true. I kind of think it's. I don't want to say it's much to do with nothing. I also think the whole, you know, we're in a big cancel culture now, right now, right, where a lot of stuffs happening, and I, and I don't know who's to say that everyone knew about Freesdale if you know these these this apartheid stuff was actually true, right? Right. But you know, it, it makes it very interesting once you know that. Uh, that information, right? Yeah, no, th- exactly, and that's why, like, I and 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 Ian, I'll go, I'll I'll go to you on this, but like, that's kind of why I when I when I first brought it up to Dwayne, the thing that keeps going through my mind is that like, how did this start? Right, it started with Steve Mills gets fired, and then just you know, as if Stein is like a kind of Lee Jenkins. I know he doesn't work for the Knicks, but it's all it's almost like he was Lee Jenkins working for the Clippers. Like, it just it was like you know, kind of rumor after rumor of Masai and it was just kind of like they it, I felt like kind of like it was like they were bombarding him in a way and 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 sorry I'm like stealing all the points but just to also jump on what Dwayne was saying it's like the Knicks can't wait like they have to do stuff so they hired Leon Rose I think they were they're like going to you know find other like heads of basketball operations but uh yeah what's your take on is this a lot to do about nothing Ian what do you think I don't, I don't know I mean these things have been it's been around for a long time this rumor you know probably well over a year in, in different facets and he you don't you know I don't know it's it's his choice and if you look at Masai as a professional as somebody who is a very ambitious individual, who's somebody who prides himself on succeeding and winning in whatever uh, facet he's doing, you have to say, when you look at him, if he's going to make a leap professionally, there better be a reason. There better He better have opportunity to do more than he's doing. So yeah. the, in particular, the Giants of Africa initiative, if we're nurturing that uh, as our organization, he needs the same guarantee that Dolan will do the same thing for him, if not more. He's going to push for more of, of those types of things with the Knicks. And if they're not going to play ball in that sense, because for Masai, it's about organizing a team and winning with that team, but it's also about more. He has a lot. He's doing a lot more. He's with the prime minister. He's, he's mm-hmm. in this country, it's a smaller kind of pool, so he can – knock on doors easier and that is speaks to the fact that he can hang around with 
Trudeau, somebody who he can influence, and now he can influence potential policy and things of that nature. If he goes to the New York Knicks, does he have more of that availability or less? Can he influence their governor? Can he even get in a room with people like that? Does he want to do that? And I think somebody Masai, like Masai wants to do more. He wants to be involved in a lot of different facets, charitable facets, winning facets. So I think if he moves to New York, he's maybe not guaranteed all of those things. So why would he do it? I, and again, if if Dolan's going to like pull his pants down and be like, you can do everything, you have free license, maybe he would listen. You know, But even then, even then, he's not guaranteed because somebody like Dolan seems to be a bit of a shifty individual, seems to be somebody who could, who could renege on something or who could, say, fire somebody <laughs> in, instantly for... For no real reason. So I don't know. I, I think that the Knicks, because they're a big market, there there's there's this tempting sort of like big big apple nature to it. But and the winning in New York and everything. But sure, winning in New York is nice. But he just won in, in Toronto and in Canada. You know what I mean? Think about how much exposure that is. He's done. And the fact that our team is still good. The fact that we we have an outlook of young of young players that we could potentially be good for for. Two, three, four, five years if we if we do the right contracts and make the right moves. I, I don't know if he's to move. It bet it it's gonna have to be for a reason. I don't see it. Here, here, um, and and you know what? <laughs> like I, I I agree with both of you a hundred percent. And I actually forgot there's another big Maasai news art news item that I didn't bring up. And I feel like it's like this is a gift. Like I I it was an accident that I didn't bring it up, but it's kind of not related to anything else. And I don't even know if we should dignify it much, but that, that police officer or that sheriff from, uh, from golden state has like reopened the charges or something like that. So well, it's like a look, civil suit. Uh, uh, see, it's I, a joke. It's a it's, microcosm of all the problems. You guys like comedy, man. This is comedy. <laughs> yeah. That's like, it's yeah, like, exactly. come on. And, and, and you know what? I think, joke. I, I wrote this, uh, I, you know, I was talking with uh, some friends and I, and, and I wrote this on like a, a message board, but like maybe this is an opportunity for MLSC to flex its muscle a bit. Like, can we counter sue this, this obviously like racially profiling sheriff or what? Like, like well, it's- I think, I think Masai should definitely uh, drop them too, because it's clear that it, it's a cash grab. I mean, there wasn't mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. Um, from a, from a criminal standpoint, and even like the claims in the, in the case, like the NBA and MLSC and the Raptors did not make signs letting people know of the danger of Masai Ujiri. Oh my God! Yeah, people at it's the total, game had it's, it's total like um big like big cop speak for when they yes. are embarrassed but feel feel like they need to get retribution. It's like a, it's just like a bully who who is is mean and horrible, but when he gets in front of people of authority, is like no, I, I'm. I didn't do anything wrong, and I was victimized. No, not, no. I like, like your it's a bully joke. voice. Yeah, I like your victimized joke voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a joke. It's a, it, the whole thing's a joke. And he, listen, I've been watching a lot of suits. I think he, this is going to come down to who has the better lawyers. And I think Masai and MLSE have better lawyers than this punk. So you know they'll they'll fly four or five lawyers down there and be like, "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> you know what? I, I I'd love to be a fly on the wall there. Um, Me too. But uh, okay, let's let's uh, let's move off from that like annoying, kind of like just weird uh, basketball adjacent stuff. And uh, something I've been thinking about recently, <laughs> and I feel like there's a lot of different takes on this. I don't know, maybe maybe you guys um, will will like maybe there's an easy answer here. But I'm going to start with you on this one, Ian. Who is the Raptors' third most important player? So you can well, kind of take the word important in any direction you want. Hold well, on, I, I mean, ask Ian, wait, we ask Ian, clarify. For the Confederacy of Ducks podcast, your standard of who are the two most important, so we fair, know. Fair. Okay, so, fair. That's fair. That's fair. I so think if we're, if we're th- sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say uh, it's Kyle and Pascal uh, mm-hmm. are, are, are are number one and two. Sure. Uh, I think Pascal probably represents like a you know the highest ceiling, and I would say on court. It's pretty tight because I think Kyle is such a winner that he has so many different little ways of affecting the game that. Yeah, maybe, maybe pass. I mean, Pascal's a all-star starter, so I guess I'll say Pascal's number one. But for me, those are the those are one and two. Is that is that fair? Yeah, I think so. I thought, and I would assume that's who you were with. And for me, of my number three, it's tough. This team's so deep, but I, I have to say Van Vliet. Um, personally, okay. for a few reasons, I think that 
he's still f- fairly young. He's in he's a young man. I think he's mid twenties. He's really he he's a he's a starting point guard who shares with Lowry, and he's he could start on any other team. You know, he's very very good. But he also he's got this unique ability to anchor whatever group he's out there with, and he kind of he's very good at making the right play. Um, he sometimes he shoots poorly from the field, but you know whatever he he's generally out there making the right decision. He's I think he's learning a lot from Lowry. I feel I see Lowry kind of rubbing off on him. And in fairness, I think that those two have similar mentalities to how basketball should be played. So the fact that they kind of are on the same team at the same time is is really awesome. Um, but you do you see a bit of that that Lowry chip on your shoulder. Um, yeah. coming over to Fred as well. And if, oh, you, if you have two highly skilled point guards with chips on their shoulder who can play whatever number of minutes you need them to with whatever group of players you need them to play with, you've got success. Because you've got, you have court, you have people like floor generals out there the whole time the game's being played if you need them, which is amazing. And you could definitely pick other players. You could say, you know, maybe Gasol if it were the playoffs or something, depending on matchups, whatever. But for me, I think it's I, th- I think it's Fred personally. Yeah, no, I yeah. think it's a I think it's a really good pick. Um, Dwayne, who's your who's your number three? Yeah, I agree with Ian. It's definitely Fred. I don't even think it's a question in terms of mm-hmm. who else it could be. I think you know for all the things that you said, Ian, and obviously the fact that you know they both play off each other, but they can play different roles at different times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Fred had that. You know that, but like you know, this is a guy who wasn't drafted and kind of wills his way into the NBA, and you know he he carries that championship poise. I mean, he's level headed in the coolest time. He's yeah. not a liability on defense. You know, he, he plays through mistakes. I think there's so many things about that guy that is just like, you know, when you're right. If, if Fred was on a different team, at this skill set, he'd be a much, you know, he'd be a bigger star. And mm-hmm. I think you know he's playing sure. that role um, to be a team player. And I think yeah, he's. He's very important. There's so many levels that he brings to this team. Another question. No, yeah, he's someone I've, I've been watching all year because I think, you know, sometimes there's just rumors uh, about players getting paid or whatever. But I think Fred, even, you know, if it's his agent leaking that, you know, he's going to get like, back up the Brinks truck and stuff. Um, well, actually, yeah, I, I think Sam uh, Sam Perkins, uh, sorry, Ke- Kendrick Perkins recently uh, tweeted that. But Fred is a guy where, you know, if you're Detroit, if you're Chicago, if you're – a, you know, a myriad of teams that, you know, have one decent point guard or, or, or no good point guards. Like it, it makes a lot of sense to throw some money at Fred. Like he's young, he's got a level head. He's a competitor. He can shoot. He can shoot from deep. He's also yep. just a good conductor of the offense. Um, like what, when he hit that three over towns yesterday, it's just like, it's, you know, it somehow ha- carried the weight of being more special than the other threes in the game. Like mm-hmm. it's hard, it's hard to kind of like put your finger on these guys who just control the tempo. Like Fred hit that three, and you know the next time, next next possession down, uh, whoever was guarding him was all over him, and he kind of just broke him down and found McCaw. Uh, you know who hit like we we made the joke earlier about the, the back breaking three, but it's kind of Fred who was the conductor of that play, and Fred's also my answer. I thought you guys might say a couple different people, so I was gonna make an argument for Serge because I think I think Serge has been amazing this year and really has been so versatile, and I also feel like he's like he's like kind of the like Kyle's obviously the soul of the team, you know Pascal's like the future. I don't know what Gasol is. Gasol's like your <laughs> smart grandpa or something. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, but Serge is like our, like our swag guy. Like he's just like, he, everyone is confident on this team, but I think Serge can give like anyone in the league a run oh, yeah. for the money as far as just like, just like out of this world confidence, like in it's, who he is. Another one of these guys who's yeah. super confident on our team. It's yeah. it, that stuff rubs off, man. It's contagious. And he, and he keeps it light, right? Like I feel like yeah. when he comes into the dressing room with a 12 foot scarf, everyone's <laughs> having a smile and a chuckle and they're not getting those pregame jitters. You yeah, know, like exactly. I just think he, he does so much like off the court as well with his, yeah. you He's know, just a super well-liked guy. Yeah. We have a he lot did. of really well-liked dudes on our team. Yeah. It yeah. must be just like the locker room is just like, you know, what a place right now. <laughs> totally. And you know, we, we barely even talk, uh, or we, we didn't even talk about uh, how exciting Terrence Davis has been during the street. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I know you guys, you guys want to talk some NBA or what? Sure. Sure. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, Maddie, would you give me that NBA sting? Matt, of all your sound collages, I think that <laughs> one's the most like what I think a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> or like, like if I have like Raptors nightmares, I think that's what they sound like. <laughs> um, okay, let's uh, let's uh, let's start with you uh, on this one, Ian, and and I can give you a refresher if you want. Sure. Um, but I just want to kind of make some quick calls here on on the uh, All Star Saturday Night winners, and then uh, we'll make some calls on the uh, who we think is going to be MVPs of the Rising Star and All Star Game. Cool. So let's uh, – I'll get your pick on the uh, skills challenge first. So mm. I'll, I'll just rattle it off in case, in case you don't have it in front of you. Sure. So we got returning champion Jason Tatum, Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, Pat Bev, Chris Middleton, Bam Adebayo. Uh, we got our boy uh, P. Skills, Spicy P. Uh, Shea is in there, and Sabonis is in there as well. So it's I like all, I the th- big men in there. That's oh, interesting. Yeah. We're doing – I think they're I think they're sticking with the big man versus small men – or, or, you know, the, they separate them into the brackets thing. I like that. That's interesting. I definitely wouldn't take – my pick is, uh, is, is Shy. Um, he's awesome. He's quick. He's, uh, he's quick with it. And I think that that's an advantage in this particular skills set thing. I mean, it's going to be – you know what? I'm going to pick him, and then, like, somebody like Sabonis is going to win somehow. You know what I mean? <laughs> but Sabonis I is, I, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but my money <laughs> is on, is on Gilgis Alexander. Um, who are you taking, uh, Dwayne? Um, I, I, I must be our two because me and Ian seem to be in sync today. Um, <laughs> I like Shay as well. I think first of all, this this come to is kind of a crapshoot, so there isn't really yeah. you know anything could happen. But I think in terms of Shay, like I mean, he's smooth, he's um, controlled, and I think for this competition, you've got to be precise. And I think you know he's not too, he, he's very controlled, which should be easy for him. Um, and I like his game. I think you know he can knock down the three, he can make those passes, he gets the cap, all that stuff. So. Um, it's also not because you know a, a Hamilton Canadian kid, but I, I like him. Yeah, it's a it's it's a good pick. He's also going to try really hard. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Pascal Siakam. Mm. No, just just kidding. I'm gonna go Bam Adebayo. Nice. No, okay. no, actually, just kidding. I'm going Pascal <laughs> Siakam. I think Bam is gonna have a he's gonna have a tough time passing it through that first thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that, that first, first, you know, pass through the circle. It's like, bam, I don't know, man. You might get stuck there. If you don't hit that the first time, you've lost. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, Dwayne, let's do the three-point contest. So just, just for the listeners, uh, we got returning champion uh, Harris, um, Dame, Buddy Heald, Zach Levine, Trey Young, Duncan Robinson, uh, Davis Bertans, and uh, Devontae Graham. So I'm going with a dark horse, or maybe perceived dark horse. Ooh. But if uh, any of you guys have watched any games with this guy on San Antonio or Washington, Davis oh, yeah. is like, dude. Yeah, that's all yeah. I'm gonna say. He's not He's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, he I think is you know, a with a three point contest, obviously rhythm is key. But yeah. I think like. That guy can knock it down. And I think if, he, if he's if he's in the zone, I think I think he can take his competition. And I, I should say too, they've added this like Mountain Dew deep shot. Yeah, and yeah. Right. he's definitely one of those guys who could hit the Mountain Dew deep shot, no problem. Yeah, I like Davis. Um, I, I, who are you going with? Him? That's a good pick, but you know what? Just because he's been playing so crazy leading up to it, I'm gonna go with Dame. Just because he seems like he's like hitting shots like he's like a robot like he's not even a human like he there wasn't that, that streak for like six games he averaged 50 points a game or something yeah like 48 yeah, so i off. think he's he's just like in another zone right now if he this is the thing about dame he could decide that he doesn't care and whatever he, he wins or he doesn't but if he catches fire like he could he's ridiculous um, I'm going to go, uh, I, I was between Devonte Graham and healed and I'm going to go healed mm, just cause I, like I, buddy. I think he's a guy who just, he just shoots a preposterous amount of threes in his life. Like yeah. that guy is just shooting threes every day. Like at, at such a preposterous rate. And like, I think he's one of those guys who can kind of get, like, I think he'll be able to get in a crazy rhythm. I'm glad to see him playing well now, man. Cause he was amazing in college. He was like, he was like player. He was college player of the year. Wasn't he? Yeah, Where the heck did he play? He played in the uh, Arkansas, right? You that's Arkansas? right. He played like somewhere, yeah, somewhere like that. Um, but he but, was amazing. Sorry, you saying but Buddy Heald or Devonte Graham? No, uh, Buddy. I'm talking about Buddy. Yeah, Buddy played for um, uh, Oklahoma. That's oh, right. right. That's yeah. who it was. Yeah. Um, 
Somewhere. Okay. So Ian, let's do uh let's do dunk off. Dunk off. This is like this, this, I mean, I don't want to say it's the dunkers are good. Like, so I don't think it's going to be a bust, but it has a weird vibe. So it's, it's Dwight Howard, Aaron Gordon, Pat Connaughton, um, and Derek Jones Jr. So I think Pat Connaughton is the only uh, new guy. For me, it's, it's Jones Jr.'s to lose, I think. But Gordon is ridiculous, but there, you only have top flight hops like that for a small amount of time unless your name is LeBron James. Um, and I think Gordon, ha- Gordon, when he, when he was in it, like when he jumped over the car there, but no, what did he do? I can't remember. No, he, he, he was, he, uh, he put it through his legs and when and he, he jumped up. He, or, yeah, yeah, he, he did all the, he did all the stuff with stuff. Yeah. Under, you know, under, he put it under, under his legs. That's leg, what it was. Yeah. That was an insane dunk. First of all, but I mean, I mean, I don't know if he's got the same kind of hops right now as Jones Jr. Um, and, and, you know, dark horse in Vegas. Maybe you put a hundred bucks on 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 Covington. <laughs> but oh, no, you, I, you I like mean, the betting angle, eh? If he, yeah, if he comes out wearing a train, like a like a like a windbreaker, like what's his name? Oh, who was that? Bre- uh, Barry. What's his name? Oh, uh, Barry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that would be like white man can't jump. Yeah, <laughs> the guy's rocking the friggin' windbreaker. I've never oh, seen man. it done. Um. Who are you going with, uh, okay. Dwayne? Pat is pretty crazy. Um, he's not my pick. I like Derek Jones Jr., but he hasn't done it before. And you know, oh, is it is it his first time? I thought he did it, it once. Oh, maybe he did. But I, I feel like so. I feel like AG Aaron, Aaron Gordon only because mm-hmm. he had such a bat a lot. His second time was really bad. Yeah, and I think. You know, in Toronto, he was able to like do the crazy dunks and execute them the first time. I think it, he's got. He's realizing that you got to you got to be mindful of the gimmicks. You know what I mean? I think yeah. because that's what kind of affects you guys. Affects ex- some ex- ex- executing off the jump. And I think mm-hmm. I'm hoping that experience is taught him because we saw what he can do creatively. We know how high he can jump. Um, so I'm going with him. Yeah, You're totally I'm, right, dude. Gimmick- I'm also going with. Uh, sorry, yeah. Just are, are you no, really disagreeing no, with the with the gimmick stuff? No, uh, I'm, he's right though. Like, the thing about the gimmick stuff is, if you do a gimmick dunk and you miss it, it takes all the wind out of your sails yep. so much. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I listened to the. I, I joked about it a bunch here, but I listened to the whole podcast where John Collins talked about how like he was he had had a specific Wright Brothers plane modeled <laughs> for his dunk, and like he had to like sign off on all the stuff that he like would not touch it, and it was like really expensive to make, and uh, obviously his foot just comes down right on it. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> um, and the gimmick king is of course Dwight Howard, so I don't know how. Yes. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, Dwight. Yeah. Yeah, Dwight's already like, how's he gonna out gimmick himself? Um, you know what? I'm 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 going Gordon though, because I think Gordon it's a it, for me it's like a perfect like retribution thing where like he's like he's good enough to have won it, you know. And I think he like he wants that title, and I feel like he can put together good enough dunks in the first rounds where people might like blow something. Like I think he's the type of guy who can make sure he gets it to the finals, and then you mm-hmm. know then take it home. And like, I, I agree with you. He might not be at the apex of his like hops, but he also is the type of guy I think who can like still do crazy dunks. True. All, all I want is a WWE moment where like Adam Silver walks in and goes, Zach Levine's in the contest too now. Oh my <laughs> God. Yes. I mean, the, it's, it's in yeah. Chicago too. Like it, it just, I'm really disappointed. He's not in this competition, you know? I know. I agree. Why? Okay, you're you're a hundred percent right. Why is there not more WWE moments, especially in the dunk off? Like, like Dwight should be like going to dunk it, and and like Adam Silver should come out and be like, guess what? It's a thirteen footer now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> like you dunked on twelve. Okay, let's see what you can do, Freddie. It's because these guys aren't making their dunks on the ten, man. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Dwight would just look up and he'd be like, I'm honestly too old for this shit. Um. Okay, let's uh, yeah, let's let's finish this off here. So, um, yeah, Dwayne, who's your who's your rising stars guy? So before I get to this, I have to make my um statement that uh, I think Tower Hero. Someone dropped David and they put Colin Sexton in today. Oh yeah, yes, that's, yeah. Yes. How do you Sexton. put Colin Sexton in and not put in Terrence Davis? Yeah, right? that's that's harsh. Like yeah. Like Colin Sexton, it's like cool. You you have twenty two points on like a terrible team. Well, so yeah. it's, ca- it's that Cleveland Cavaliers. It's that big market down there. Exactly. <laughs> my, my other my other rant is that uh, Trey and Lucas shouldn't be if they're in the big game, they shouldn't be in this game. 
I agree. Mm-hmm. Like, say, hey, you know what? They they were they were voted by the coaches, or whatever. They're not going to be playing because it just takes up two other spots from you know um, deserving guys. I totally um, agree. With that being said, though, um, the MVP generally goes to the team that wins, and I think the U.S. is going to take it. I like Trey. I think Trey is built for these kind of games, so I'm looking at Trey Young. Yeah, it's a that's, that's a good pick. Um, I'll throw it to you, Ian, but I'll, I'll just say for this one, I'm actually going to go Shea because I mm. I think that uh, you know. Dwayne's got a good point about the, the you know, Team USA probably winning, but I think if Team World does win, uh, Shea's the type of guy who's like, he's just going to go off and like, he may or may not pass the ball often. You know what I mean? Like, I could see, I could see him just calling his own number quite a bit and having like a 40 point game. Um, yeah. Yeah. Who, who's your guy, Ian? Um, I think, yeah, I, I like the, the Shea as well, but I'm going to go, especially if Trey's playing, like, He's head and shoulders above a lot of these guys. There's, and in a game where no defense is really played, is he going to take 15 threes? You know what I mean? Like, he he could easily get – he averages 30 points a game. He could get 30 points without really batting an eye. I think he probably will. And maybe he'll just do it because he'll be like, yeah, that's right, I'm playing in this game, and I, you know, I'm an all-star, like whatever. Who knows? Or he might, or he might decide to not. But I'll, I'll go with Trey, but it would be cool if it was a Zion show. I will say. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Zion definitely like this is a this would be a nice time for him to have like a really just like, fun entertaining game. Yeah, like, it would. They're, you know they're going to give him a few like wide open breaks where he's oh, something yeah. stupid. And I feel like everyone's rooting for that guy. Like he just he's yeah he's a whole other podcast in and of itself. That guy. Yeah. A, he's like something like like nothing else. Okay, let's. Uh, I, I got two more questions here, but I think we'll have to cut one because uh, I want to get to quickish questions here. So. I'll I'll give them both to you and you can you can go, I'll just kind of let you pick one. So Dwayne, sure, yeah, give uh, g- give me your pick for um you know just to, I I know the this podcast is only once a week so the deadline is is kind of come and gone but um yeah who who's your pick for the uh, the biggest like team winner at the deadline and or um kind of like the best like uh, change of scenery for a player like a guy who's in a new place. Who's kind of just in a good situation? Well, I'll, I'll do one uh, in the spirit of time, and I'm gonna go with best change of scenery, and okay. I'm kind of torn, but I'm gonna say Andrew Wiggins. Hmm, and, nice. You know, he's a guy we've seen throughout his career, which because we've seen the potential, what he can do, we've expected him to be like a top level star in this league. Yeah, but when he's on, he can he can do it all, and I think the thing that the problem is that he's not really wired. He doesn't want to be that guy. So going uh-huh. to a team like the Warriors where he can be second or third or fourth fiddle, possibly, depending yeah. on who it is. Um, and also, he, like, you know, going back to the Warriors when they're in the prime, it's like who you defend, right? And, of course, Steph and Clay and even Draymond to an extent are going to command that attention. So Wiggins is going to have it a lot easier than he's had it in Minnesota. So I think he's going to benefit from change scenery. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm totally with you. I think he's a he's a pretty solid candidate for, for change of scen- scenery. Um I'll say for me, uh, before I go to you, Ian, uh, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll choose um, uh, the team that I think won the most. And it's like, I hope this isn't like a cop-out answer because they're still not going to make the playoffs this year. But I feel like the Hawks just getting Kawhi, yeah, man. like that, he, that's a good player to get. At, like, uh, you know, and I understand the uh, the fit issues potentially with Collins and, and Capella down the road. But just as like, you know, Trey's good now. And I think that, just getting him an option, even for the end of this season, you know, the, you start next year off with two really, really good bigs. And I think that's kind of like a – that's the type of building block you need when, when you're in the basement and, and you have a, a really good player like Trey. Um, yeah, what's, what's, your, uh, what's your pick for either question, Ian? Uh, it's, they're both – those are good questions. Um, I'll choose the – I don't know. I like the Wiggins answer. I like the Hawks answer. Those are going to be my answers. But I'll say with team – um, I honestly, weirdly enough, Golden State. I hate to say it, but they got rid of a guy who they didn't end up wanting to keep in D'Angelo. He's a great player, really, really great player, but uh, it wouldn't have fit, especially next year. Um, and you get a guy like Wiggins, who is a scorer, who's somebody that they can mold into who they want him to be. It, and he had a crazy career in in uh, in uh, uh, Minnesota there with Flip and everything. Like he yeah. had so many ups and downs and. A lot of a lot coaches, of like a lot of bad, you know, lot, and going through a guy like who he really cared for and flip, and then having him pass away and stuff like that is really hard. And 
for him to just be on the other side of the country with Steve Kerr, who's a great PC. Um, you know, I think that especially next year, dude, Golden State, they're going to have all their guys back. They're going to have Wiggins, and they have Minnesota's first-round pick next year, don't they? And then the second as well. So, like, they always pick well. So I think they, they're really kind of next – this year, whatever. Forget it. But next year – People are going to be like, oh, shit, that's right, Golden State. <laughs> and, and you made one good point after that. Like, you talk about the new environment, but they have a culture in Golden State, and that's something he never yeah. had in Minnesota, yeah. which yes. is definitely going to help him too, right? Yeah, it will. He'll be – if all the places he could have gone, professionally speaking, he has the best chance to succeed where he is at. Yeah. And I, I think, like, you know – there's there's different ways to lead and there's different ways to motivate people too. So it should be interesting to see how Wiggins does, you know, yeah. cause I think him and him and towns, it seems like neither is a leader, you know, a guy like Jimmy comes in, he's like definitely that like forceful leader, but you know, Steph's not really like that. And I, I don't, I don't know if Clay's like that either. So I think, you know, on offense, you're going to have lots of motion and kind of like, Steph and Clay yelling at Wiggins, like, go over here, do this. And then on defense, you're going to have Draymond yelling at him. And then, yeah, you know, so I think, yes, there's a lot of, a lot of room for positivity. And I mean, don't forget, he's highly skilled. He's highly yeah. skilled. He's very athletic. He's got a good little jump shot. Like, Wiggins is a player, man. He's just got, he just, he had needed to get the hell out of Minnesota for a couple of years. I will say this, though. He's definitely in, like, you know, he's, he's worked himself into kind of like, it, it could be scapegoat territory. Like, yeah. if the Warriors are bad next year, you know, even if there's like, let's say Draymond is like older or a step slow or whatever, and there's a lot of other reasons, I think if, if they're not good, people are like, Wiggins is going to be like diagnosed like a, like a lifetime loser. I feel like. Maybe I not. I think they'll be good, though. I do think they'll be good. They'll probably end up drafting really well with these picks they have. Their team is... When you have Clay and Steph, like... It's hard to be shit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's uh, let's wrap this baby up. You guys want to do some quickish questions? Sure. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Maddie, would you give me that quickish question sting? Quickish question. Okay, guys, uh, quickish questions. Uh, I'm going to stumble through these questions. I slur. <laughs> I stutter. You know, like it's, it's confusing. But uh, you just got to answer as quick as you can. Can't phone got a friend. It. No stalling. Uh, are you ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go Ian, Dwayne, Matt. So, uh, Ian, it's coming to you first. Okay. Um, it's from Thomas. Mm-hmm. Spurs may not make the playoffs for the first time in forever. What drastic change will the franchise make? Uh, I don't think they'll do anything. They're a pretty pragmatic team. Um, missing the playoffs one year out of the past 18 or whatever is not that big of a deal. Move on and try to draft the player that's good. Okay. Dwayne, this is a pretty silly question, so you got to follow it. Um, no, I think um, – I, I, I can't remember what DeMar's status is, but i got to think that – you know, they got to make some kind of change uh, with this team. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you still develop the young guys, but is DeMar taking shots? Is DeMar taking minutes away from other guys? So maybe move a guy like DeMar somehow over the summer. You got to pay Jamonte more. Yep. Um, by the way, uh, Dwayne, I messed up there because I was actually leading into the next question. <laughs> but well, you, I'm like, yeah. this is great because now I have time to think of an answer about Ian answers. <laughs> you know what? Thomas is just lucky. The first question got two answers, so enjoy it, buddy. Um, okay, but okay, yeah. No, what right. I was going to say is this question's really silly, so just follow along. Okay. Okay. Um, so Thomas is saying, did a wizard cast a spell that that makes Cat incapable of playing D? Uh, if it is confirmed a wizard casts a spell, why? And what stakes does that wizard have in the game? Is this wizard from the wizards? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, yeah, there's a lot there. Just say whatever you want to say. Um... Yes, a wizard did cast a spell on cat. <laughs> okay. That's a good yes. I'm trying to think of which, which wizard it could be. Could it be John Wall just because he's a miserable wizard? <laughs> oh my God, that would be <laughs> perfect. Uh, okay, Matt, um, this one's coming out. Oh, actually, this one is specifically for you. Oh. 
Uh, it's coming from Marco. Uh, hi, Marco. When Masai and Trudeau are zipping around Africa, are they <laughs> using separate dirt bikes or sharing one tandem <laughs> motorcycle? <laughs> Follow-up question. One piece visor goggles or individual eyeball goggles? <laughs> um, I, I gotta say, I'd love to see a tandem motorcycle. Are you talking about like with the little sidecar? Like yeah, the two like, fat ladies. Yeah, yeah they go yeah. Mad Max style. Like. Yeah, I would like. Yeah, I think that's. I can definitely see that. And they're uh, they're gonna have those crazy eyeball goggles, like the crazy scientist. And uh, Masai's gonna really show him a good time. I love it. Okay, uh, Ma- uh, sorry, um, Ian. It's come from uh, from Daniel. Okay. Should we look for someone on the buyout market? If so, who? Uh, I don't think so. I think again with a team that's high chemistry like we are deep rotation, good coaching uh, on a huge winning streak. Keep it up. Don't shake it. Don't shake any locker room and things. There's no need. Okay, Dwayne, this is coming from Miguel. Any team's going to fall off hard in the second half of the season? Okay, let's see. Um, let's say Philly. Let's say that Philly is going to mm. There's already trouble in paradise there. There's interesting things going on. And then bead injuries and stuff. Yeah, yeah it's let's, like... Let's say Philly. I don't know. Yeah, it's good getting u- uglier than I thought it could in Philly. Um, okay, Matt. Yes. Has, this is coming from Jess. Hi, Jess. Do we fear the Bucks? I mean, they are great, and Ovs they res- uh, Ovs get the respect, but do we fear the deer? I just feel like same as last year, they're exploitable. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't think I don't think we fear them any more than we did last year. Okay, uh, Matt. This is coming from uh, from Anthony. If the season ended today, who takes home most improved uh, player? Oh, sorry, this is for Ian. Go okay. Mess it up. No, I uh, think it's for Dwayne, isn't it? No. No? Wait. Okay, sorry. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, sorry. I'll, I'll say it again. This is for Ian. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's on me, guys. It's on me. <laughs> if the season ended today, who takes home most improved player? Most improved player? Mmm. That's a good question. Um, who the heck is playing really well right now? Start it. Yeah, yeah. Devontae Graham or is it PJ Washington? Maybe, or you could even maybe give it to Devonis. Right, maybe even Devonis. Right, it's maybe, all good. That's what it's about. Maybe, maybe Devonis Sabonis or whatever. Sabonis, yeah. He's playing huge, and he didn't really have a, that big of a year last year. He played all right, but, well, that's my answer. I'll say him. Uh, I say you got to give it to Dwight. Um, Ooh. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> Dwayne, this one's for you. And actually, this one's perfect for you. So this is coming from Jonathan. What would you prefer to watch? The celebrity game at All Star Weekend, or <laughs> the answer, <laughs> or a game consisting of only owners, front uh, front <laughs> office executives, and coaches. Oh my god, <laughs> Jonathan, you could have made that question like an All Star game or owners and coaches. Like, well, celebrity game is trash, by the way. But yeah. owners yeah. and coaches would be so funny to watch. Like we talked about Nick Nurse earlier in the show. Like, could you imagine that? Oh, Dolan. The best. <laughs> Dolan. Oh my God. Yeah, Brad Dolan Stevens just getting dunked on repeatedly. <laughs> Brad Stevens getting dunked on. That'd be nice. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Matt, it's coming from you. Or for it's me. Coming to, you. Coming to um, me. So, uh, and, and Dwayne actually just mentioned this. Uh, Tyro Hero is being replaced in the Rising Stars game by Colin Sexton. All he says is, what the fuck? Question mark. Yes. <laughs> Um, you know, I don't really, I don't know why either. Why, why, uh, it should Colin be Terrence Sexton's Davis, in. right? Yeah, it should be Terrence Davis. But are, are they trying to, uh, just, you know, they can never go too heavy on the Raptors, you know, like us having three is like, whoa. I don't know. It's messed up. Um, okay. Uh, Ian, this is your last question. Okay. Uh, and you know what? I'm not going to lie. This is barely a question, but I hope you enjoy. <laughs> okay. This is coming from, coming from Timber. Uh, in the song, 24K Magic, Bruno Mars sings, Oh shit, I'm a dangerous man with some money in my pocket. Is this actually a legal disclaimer in case anyone would try and stop him from going on stage at his own concert? I mean, it might be. I'm not a lawyer, but I feel like there's dangerous is ultimately subjective. He hasn't, he hasn't posed any threat to anyone. <laughs> sure. And for him to have money in his pocket, a lot of people have money in their pocket. Fair. He doesn't, specify, he doesn't specify how much he has either. I like your really, really practical answer. That's great. There we go. Um, okay, Dwayne. <laughs> yeah. This is a, it's a fun one. It's the last uh, last question of the pod here. So Jonathan's asking, um, what do you do that should be called art instead of the thing that it actually is? So what's your artful thing that is just you? Just, it's just art. 
I am like the king of the no look pass. I love, Ooh. I love if it's if it's me and you on the on to just passing each other. I'm not looking. <laughs> well, like ever. Like ever. I think it's art. I think it's probably not, but I love like I'll just turn away every time. In, in your I'm mind, like, it's art though. My no look passes are art. They're a thing of beauty. Well, folks, if you're listening to the podcast and uh, you know. You see Dwayne playing some ball. Snap a pic of him making a pass, and then you know hire someone to draw that out. Like, and then help. put it in the Louvre. Yeah, yeah, put it in the Louvre. Yeah, like <laughs> you skip, skip all the other museums. Go, and draw, go. draw, draw, draw two on him as well. Draw a confederate Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, make sure he's, he's smart. It. Yeah. Uh, well, guys, that's the pod. Thanks so much for doing it, man. My pleasure. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you, Matt, for having us on. No Thanks problem, for having guys. Fun, man. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I think before we take off, uh, Dwayne, I'll jump to you first. Is, uh, is there anything coming up that, uh, that you want people to check out? That, uh, you know, um, this is going to come out on the um, – what, what is it today? The 11th? So this is coming out on the 12th. Okay. Um, Raps Unpublished. I just did an interview with uh, our man Mo Pete, kind of talking about his career as a Raptor, um, looking back at these current guys and what's up. That was cool. Uh, NBA Excel as well and NBA TV Canada. And, you know, it's like um, – you guys, Confederacy Ducks, family, always. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks. I appreciate that, man. Um, uh, Ian, what's up, dude? Do you, are you doing any shows? Where can people check you out? Yeah, lots of shows. I'm often at the Corner Comedy Club uh, downtown in the East End in Leslieville on Fridays and Saturdays. Come out to the Corner Comedy Club. It's fun. It's a good show. Right on. Um, well, uh, well, guys, thanks, uh, and go Raps. Absolutely. Go Raps, and, uh, and let's hope for 16. Hey, let's. I'm not going to say anymore. I don't want to jinx nothing. Sweet 16. Nothing. Sweet 16, baby. And uh, we're so sorry to the Calgary Stampeders because the Raptors now have the permanent record. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll win 16 in a row again. You never know. That crazy CFL, right? Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. Uh, okay, guys. Well, uh, thanks, and uh, I'll check you both later. It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. 